All right. So, uh, well, in our last few classes, we've looked at uh, metric measurement conversions, which again was the most easiest one because you're always multiplying by multiples of 10 or dividing by multiples of 10. So you're either multiplying by 10, 100, 1,000, or dividing by 10, 1, uh, 100, 1,000. Then we got into last class, the imperial measurement. So that's the American stuff where you're dealing with feet, and miles. And we looked at creating those charts uh, to, and using our conversion sheet to set up an equation and solve that equation. Now what we're gonna do today is essentially the same thing, only we are now going to mix metric and imperial conversions. But because we're going to be using our conversion sheet, we're gonna be using the same process. So if you understood what we did last class with imperial measurement, you're already ahead of the game here, all right? And if you didn't understand it, it's kind of your second shot at it because we're essentially going to follow the same steps. All right, so my first question that I have is I want to convert 1,750 miles to kilometers. All right, so just like I did the other day, I'm going to create a table. And for those of you who came to my homework take up, I did the same thing. All right, so there's my table. Now, I'm dealing with miles and kilometers. So I put my units in the middle. So I got my miles and my kilometers. Now we have 1,750 miles. And I want to know how many kilometers that is. All right, so that's the information that we have. Now, this is where I go to my conversion sheet. And I want to see the relationship between miles and kilometers. And so I look uh, under length. And when I'm dealing with metric and imperial, I'll go over to that section. And it says, oh, down at the bottom, one mile is 1.609 kilometers. All right. So now that I've got my table completed, essentially what I'm going to do is get rid of all the messy stuff in the table. And it's going to become an equation because I can take this 1,750 divided by x, there's one side, there's our fraction, is going to equal 1 over 1.609. All right, and just like we did the other day when I have a fraction equaling a fraction, again, I mentioned this, this is going to be something we're going to do a whole lot of in the next month. All right, I have to cross multiply. And so when I get 1 times x, well, that's just an x. But then I have uh, 1,750 times 1.609. All right. And as I mentioned, the end of these questions, you're either dividing or you're multiplying. This time it looks like we're multiplying. All right. So I take my 1,750 and I multiply it by my 1.609. I get to, uh, and we always go to two decimal places here. I'm getting 2,815 point, And again, going to two decimal places, 7.5. Can't forget to put the units in there. And when you set up your table, it's telling you what units. Well, X is kilometers. And there we go. All right. Now, try another one here. I'm going to go to uh, on my handout C. Uh, I want to convert 41.2 kilograms to pounds. So we're going from uh, this time, this, we're, go we're going from metric to imperial. Here we went from imperial to metric, but again, it's the same steps. So again, I'm going to set up my table. All right, we've got our units here. We're dealing with kilograms and pounds. All right, uh, I'm going to write in my information here. I got uh, 41.2 kilograms. Make sure you get things in the right spot. I don't know how many pounds that is. All right, now to fill out the other side of our table again, going to my conversion sheet. I need to see the relationship uh, between kilograms and pounds. And so at the bottom of that sheet there, uh, I go to mass because they're both weights. And uh, kilograms to pound, let's see, it says one pound, one pound here, so I'm going to put a one under pounds, is 0 0.45 kilograms. There we go. So again, I made sure I got things in the right spot. 
Now, uh, going with a fraction equaling a fraction. So again, setting up my equation. So I have 41.2 all over X is equal to, uh, we've got the other one here. So we get uh, 0 0.454 on the top, uh, one on the bottom. Well, rinse, wash, repeat. We're going to do the same thing, right? We're going to do cross multiplying. All right, so then I'm going to have X times 0 0.5. 0 0.454, or again, we always write the number first, so 0 0.454 times x, all right, uh, is equal to the other part of the cross multiplying, which is 41.2 times 1. Well, that's going to be 41.2. All right, so uh, i got to get x by itself. Well, it's attached, so the only way to make that happen is to divide it off. So I'm going to divide both sides by that 0.454. All right, so again, those divide each other off, and then we get x by itself because that's what we want, right? We want to solve for x. And uh, like I said, sometimes your finish is uh, multiplying. In this case, it's dividing. Uh, so we get 41.2 divided by that decimal there of 0 0.454, and... Uh, I end up with 90.75 uh, pounds, right? Because we're finding pounds. And there we go. Any questions at all? Again, feel free to speak up, but... All right, now we're going to try some of the, what I call the harder ones. I only mean harder as in because there's two steps. So this is something you got to watch in for. All right. So uh, E. I want to convert 441 ounces uh, to kilograms. All right. So do a little table just like you did before. Now. I grab my sheet here. Now here's the problem, is I want to go uh, ounces to kilograms. Uh, but if I look on my sheet here, this is what makes this really hard is, the conversion sheet, there is no ounces to kilograms. Eek. But what there is, is, is that I can convert ounces to grams and then I'm going to have to flip those grams to kilograms. So we can't just do it right away because we don't know the relationship between ounces and grams. All right. So I'm going to go to our ounces to kilograms. So I'm going to go ounces to grams and then grams to kilograms. Two steps. So we're going to do the same process, just going to have to do it twice. All right, so we have 441 ounces. I want to know how many grams that is because I'm going to put that right in here. All right, now, ounces to grams, like I said, that is on the sheet. I want to make sure that it, that is. All right, and it says one ounce is 28.35 grams. All right. So again, uh, well, got my fraction. 441 over X is equal to 1 over 28.35. All right, I do a little cross multiplying. You got a fraction equaling a fraction, so I got 1 times X. Well, that's just X. And then I've got uh, 441 times by 28.35. And so if I multiply those two numbers, I'm going to get a big answer here. Uh, let's see here. We get uh, ounces to grams. So I got to grab my calculator for that one. I don't have that. Let's see here. So we got 441 times 28.35. 
and I get, whoa, 1,000, nope, 12,000. 502.35 grams. All right. So now I'm going to take that grams and convert it into kilograms. All right. So I'm going to take that one that or 12,000, I should say, 502.35 grams. I want to know how many kilograms that is. And again, the reason I'm doing this is because on my conversion sheet, I can flip grams to kilograms. And so uh, it says that uh, there is a thousand grams in one kilogram. All right, so then now I'm just gonna do the same thing I did before. I've got my fractions. All right, so I'm gonna have, uh, let's see, I don't wanna run out of room here, but uh, yeah, we got uh, 12,502.35. Divided by X is equal to 1,000 is on the top, one's on the bottom. And once again, we're going to cross multiply. So I got X times 1,000. Well, that's 1,000 times X, same thing. And then I got my 12,502 times 1. Well, that's just going to be 12,502.35. All right, and it uh, looks like to get x by itself this time, we're going to have to divide. Here we got to multiply, same question. We multiply here, we're going to have to divide here. So divide this side by 1,000. Well, what I do to one side, I do to the other. Let's divide each other out. And finally, after two steps, we get our answer here. I take my 12,502.35. Uh, I divide it by 1,000. And I end up with 12.5, and with that is in kilograms. Again, I'm only going to two decimal places, so I don't need to put all the extra, de uh, extra numbers. Just to two decimal places, because all we deal with in life is two decimal places, mostly time and money, always in two decimal places. All right, now, one more, F. I got a different color here. Where we're going to go with uh, 300 fluid ounces. Two liters. All right. So again, I'm going to try to set up my table here. But again, it's always handy uh, looking at your sheet. Make sure we can do this first. And so I look for fluid ounces, and uh, yeah, I don't see anything. Uh, it's not in, I can't get it to liters. Uh, but I can get it to milliliters. So I'm going to flip it to milliliters, and then I can see that I can also put milliliters into liters. All right, so I'm going to go fluid ounces to milliliters, and then flip it milliliters into liters. So again, two steps. All right, so uh, we have 300 fluid ounces. Uh, we want to know how many milliliters that is. All right, and so uh, let's see here. I got my sheet. Should have put that down. Let's see. It says uh, one fluid ounce. The relationship to milliliters is 29.574. Uh, milliliters. All right, now, as I did before, set up my fraction here. So I'm going to have a 300 over X is equal to 1 over that 29.574. All right, so uh, again, when I have a fraction equaling a fraction, I'm going to cross multiply. And so I got 1 times X here. That's just X. And then I've got uh, the other part of the cross multiplying. I got 300 times 29.574. That's going to be a big number. All right. So I multiply those two numbers. And let's see here. What am I getting here? Uh, I multiply the two of them. And I get uh, 8,000. 
872.2 milliliters. All right. So then, finally, I can take my milliliters and put it into liters. So again, I can draw my table. I've got milliliters. I want to put it into liters. All right, that's not showing up that good. I'm going to just head back to the black. Where is it? There we go. All right. Put that in there. And so we have 8,872.2 milliliters. I want to know how many liters that is because that's the final thing we want. Uh, I look on my relationship sheet or my conversion sheet. It says 1,000 milliliters are in one liter. And as you guessed it, again, we're going to create an equation. All right, so 8,872.2 all over X is equal to 1,000 over 1. All right, so I'm going to cross multiply. Uh, again, I got 1,000 times X. Well, that's 1,000 X. The other part of my cross multiplying, I got 1 times 8,000 872.2, so that's all I'm going to get. And it looks like the ending of this one, again, we're going to divide to get X by itself. And, of course, what I do to one side, I do to the other. And after all that, it looks at like 300 fluid ounces is going to be uh, 8.87 liters all right so again sometimes you got to go two steps because there's not a direct relationship between the units most of the time there is though but again in the end we're doing the same thing where we set up our tables you get your units right you know what you have know what you're trying to find and then you find the relationship between the two of them